mostly in gameplay. In Schalke, it's due to their shot caller, Gilius, who has taken the burden and says, you know what, it is my fault if we play poorly and I need to get more consistent. But you can only make that excuse so many times before you can truly Absolutely. get blamed for it. It's true. You need to see improvement. And you, if you're going to own up to it, you really have to make sure that you change something. We're going to have to see what these teams change. Nidalee taken off the table. Mm -hmm. Maybe Unicorns love liking that Sightstone Rek'Sai, not looking yeah. to pick into the poor matchup. Here. Move's not looking for an, an aggressive Nidalee here, uh, mostly because the first pick, it will go to something else. On the, on the side of Unicorns left, they may just pick up an early Shen here. We have to see, of course, Bard taking off the table as well. Vladimir, Azir, Swain, a lot of mid lane focus. And interestingly enough, the Ash taken off the table for Veritas. Yeah. Utility 80 carries, very successful for him. Yeah, Veritas performs well on utility 80 carries. I think uh, Schalke has to pick up the Jin here in first rotation, though, if they leave it open and they just kind of give him what he wants. Because they remove the Ash, but they give him the other utility 80 carry, which is really strong in this patch. Um, I would like the Elise here from Gilius. I think any aggressive forward champion is strong for them early, something that he can really drive the map with, make sure that he's involved in everything, and that helps his shot calling too. And of course, Gilius, uh, his champion pool not frequently banned out, but Nidalee and Elise, the primary focus is if they are going to take something away. It makes a lot of sense, but you can see Schalke I, I, yeah. thinking about picking the Jin here, and they're going to lock it in. Definitely the right choice. We saw Unicorns of Love tear apart the opposition. This is the right counter from Schalke. If you leave everything open and you get the Shen pick on the other side, you need to answer with at least one of their comfort picks that you take away. And Jin Karma is just a, a very strong lane overall. It's almost impossible to beat if they play it properly. Yeah, and something that we've seen uh, from the side of Schalke is obviously not exactly the most carry potential coming from this bottom lane, but strong, consistent performances from Mr. Raws and Sprottle, and they've We've kind of praised their lane as a 2v2. Yeah, I think 2v2 they could beat Veritas and Hillsang, but it wouldn't be by much. It mostly dependent on the champion picks. This is usually where Hillsang ends up playing Nami, and he's actually not that efficient on it then. I, I feel I really liked him on the Bard, but with the Karma taken away, he kind of has to match it with another utility long range support, or he gets very rough. He could opt for another Zyra, but his one Zyra game was very lackluster. So I think the Hillsang right now is a bit running out of champions. In the past, he's picked Thresh, but then it's very hit or miss. It's something we've seen rise in popularity too over the course of the EU LCS in the last few weeks, but still not a power pick in terms of support pool. Karma, really the number one priority for so many teams, frequently seeing bans. But with the Caitlyn and the Victor locked in for Unicorn's Love, looks like we have the core of this team comp kind of put together. Support and jungle, really yep. the only picks remaining. 4-1. Uh, Victor and Caitlyn pair a little roughly because Caitlyn doesn't want to play on the side lane. She wants to be mid in the mid game. Usually in 1-3-1 one one comps because the traps suit her so well there. Victor doesn't want to go play on a side lane either. So Unicorn's looking to play a 4-1, which they do very rarely. Usually Unicorn's commit to a 1-3-1 one one heavily and that, that's their mid-game gameplay pattern. So right now they're looking again to be very dense with their four-man group and then get teleports off with Vizichachi and just brute force team fights. And while Schalke are thinking about the second rotation here, finalizing the Elise, taking a little bit more time on this Narge to make sure that that's the right choice. Uh, we talk about the 1-3-1. One, one. Did not work out for Unicorns in Game 2 yesterday, nope. but Exile's Anivia was absolutely fantastic, and I kind of like that they're putting him on these champions that cannot reliably split push, making him group with the team, and it seems to be much better for them overall. Yeah, much better. Let's see, Hilasang doesn't find any range supports here, so they're going for a Braum, but with Braum, Rex, I Shen, that's triple frontline. You do have some enablers for the Shen, but at least Caitlyn, Victor, only has damage dealers right there. Yeah. Very odd, I think, Coming in from this team, we're going to have to see what their final lock-in is going to be. On the opposite side, Schalke, a lot of good pick potential coming in here, as well as the Gnar for Steve, a pick he had an immense amount of success on yesterday, of course. That beautiful highlight play flank, as well as yeah. just individual laning props. I mean, the, the Gnar matchup in the Shen is still some we need to see more of. I've seen Shen go bang on even on CS, I've seen Shen go slightly ahead sometimes, and I've seen Gnar murder him in the matchup. I think it's very highly dependent on I think the first few levels, how well they go and how much push the Nar gets. If Nar gets to push Shen in the first few levels, he's actually fine in the matchup. If Shen gets to push early, he can actually uh, farm just fine. Need to evaluate that more. And to be fair, we've seen Chachi be an incredibly strong laner when it comes to playing this Shen. Steve, of course, a similar story on the Nar. I'm really curious how mechanically these guys are going to stack up if they get the 1v1s. So it wasn't the Braum after all that we talked about. He switched to Nami too. I think it's better, some range sustain. That means you can actually 2v2 because if you opt in, for the Braum, Kale and Braum will just lose against uh, Jin Karma, and then they suffer in the 2v2, and then they require a lane swap. At least this way, they can both play lane swap and play standard lanes. Definitely good to have that flexibility. We were skeptical about the Nami in terms of comfort here. Do you really think it's 
going to be the right choice coming in for Unicorns of Love? I mean, Hillsign will just have low impact. On Nami, he's, he's not the one that can then face check and make a play. He always will need to pair with move together, and I think that's always been a, a bit of a, a problem for any Unicorns of Love support jungle combination, barring when Diamond Prox was on the team. After that, they've always struggled to really have that jungle support synergy come down. Now that they're playing 1-4, it's slightly easier because the map is, is more compact. It's more likely that your support and your jungler end up grouping as opposed to in a 1-3-1 where everybody's all over the place. But we still need to judge if Hillisan gets caught because he does tend to play over-aggressive on some of these squishier supports. And it's a big question for us as we move forward as well. And the thing that I want to talk about here, Fox picking up the Casio as well. We're, we're wondering how the Unicorns of Love comp is going to play out, but I don't know how they're going to be able to fight against this Casio. Fox is so dominant on this pick, and we've seen him carry team fights so easily when he's given the chance. I mean, Unicorns have a lot of ways of deciding whether they want to fight or not. That is the one. I mean, they can defend this tower. Victor Waveclear with E plus the traps from Kaelin can keep this siege away. Uh, we'll need to see a lot of poke come out here from Schalke, also playing a 1-4. So split pushing will be very minimal. It'll be Shannon Nar in one lane, and then both teams grouped in the mid lane, but the amount of poke here and set up for this deadly flourish from Schalke could make for a very interesting mid-game filled with picks. That's the thing I love about watching Jin in competitive is that long-range option for engages. So many fights that you never thought you would see get started. Just so easy to initiate when he uses the deadly flourish and the alt from such long range as well. Curtain call, such an insane ability to watch. But guys, you've got a couple seconds here. Head on over to Twitter. Actually, I just noticed this awkwardly, slightly awkwardly cropped Gilead's picture. That just made my day. Huh? Just the top of his head. I mean, they're all slightly awkwardly cropped. <laughs> he just has his hair down instead of up. I like it. Tweet out hashtag UOL win, Welcome though. to League of Forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a pause, so we're going to get an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the League of Forehead. But, of course, hashtag UOL win, hashtag S04 win if you're on Twitter. Let us know who oh, you think is going to come out on top. Look at us. We're in the sky, but we're look in at the dark. Yeah. Me it's menacing. We were the overlords looking in the shadows. It's the start of our rap music video. <laughs> get the smoke come out. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have nearly enough bling. That's the issue. I don't, I don't feel like it would work quite as well as, as yeah, I wanted to. I don't think we can convince the wardrobe specialist to get us some bling. No. I don't think it'll fit. I think they're a little bit more sold on professionalism and dressing like we're 20 years older than we are. Yeah. What For do you mean, 20 years? Please. <laughs> All right, yeah. maybe not you, Mr. Blue Shirt, but I, I got this, like, pattern. I feel like a librarian right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm loving it. Don't get me wrong. I love Give me the, the history look. of Oxford right now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Sprattle is having his client restarted. Uh, he just did that, then he logged in again, got into the game. And we're going back in right now. We'll verify if everything's working again. And hopefully we'll get you guys into the game very soon, guys. Yeah, gearing up. So we talk about Jin as a long-range engage option. Caitlyn, a similarly long-range champion, doesn't have the, the option for the engage, but we've seen the traps be so frustrating to play against. And it seems like if Unicorns Love get a lead, this would be so hard to play yeah, against. Yeah, both these teams can actually siege up and put a lot of pressure uh, and zone control. In team fights, Victor and Caitlyn, if Caitlyn gets a setup first, combined with a Victor, has good zone control. But if you look at Karma Q proking, any Cassio poison plus the Jin W is just so strong. My Asthma plus Deadly Flourish is one of the coolest combos in the game because you throw it out next to a tower, people can't walk on it because they'll get tagged. Then Jin has a really easy connect on his W and you can't flash it. Yeah. At that point, because uh, Miasma has the grounding effect. It's one of the few effects in the game, or the only effect. Yeah, it's the only grounding effect in the game, and it's incredibly oppressive. We actually tested a lot of it earlier in the week. It's not going to interrupt any dash that's already started, but if you are inside of it, you are not getting out. You are not getting anything in that exchange. And we have a little bit of an echo. Just a bit. I wonder if they can hear that on stream, but I hear myself twice, and I like myself a lot, personally. Remember when we were talking about the rap music video? I mean, you ask and you shall receive. <laughs> you ask and you shall receive. This is the remix? <laughs> I mean, I love listening to myself, but twice is a little bit too much, yeah. Sipa. Like, we're vain, but we're not like completely narcissistic here on the EU LCS. Oh, yeah. I like this. Crowd riled up. Cloud is ready. And it yeah. looks like we might get standard lanes here. Both teams moving to the top side, utilizing that early vision to get as much information on the lane swap as possible. Great. And that's actually, I think, Mr. Rawls and Sprattle calling the swap here, predicting it. Because I think they're slightly stronger in their lane. But yeah. it depends on the play style, really. I love playing the Karma Jin lane over uh, Nami Caitlyn. Nami Caitlyn's kind of the trade and sustain lane. Mm. Whereas on the other side, you have the better trade in lane. But if you fall behind, you obviously don't have the sustain on Rawls and uh, Sprattle's side. And this is really interesting. So not normally a 2v2 matchup we see a whole lot of. Oh, they're prioritizing push right now. So Sprattle's actually not going for a ass. He just wants the Mantra Q on the wave. 
so they can get the push out. That's why Veritas is now aggressively challenging minions. This is no longer about trading. It's about the race to level two into all in because when no camp is taken, you level up on the ninth creep here. So three melees have to go down. Oh, and Hillsign takes the AoE in the creeps too. Um, so this is always super fascinating for me, the race to level two. Right now, he's looking for the third Q to finish uh, everything off. So they both get level two, and now they're in a good spot here, Sprattle. As long as they don't get level two power spike by Veritas and Hillesang, they can connect Deadly Flourish right now yeah, at any nice time. Nice little bit of poke. Raws has that fourth shot if he wants to get aggressive here. And we got to keep our eyes on the junglers as well. You can see Gilius a little bit faster on this jungle clear, does opt to skip the race and is now heading into the top side. Moves similarly on the way. It looks like we may have some action here, both junglers moving up. Yeah, I like it. Well, Elisa seemed to do that a lot, to do buff into whatever camp's next to it, and then they skip the next camp and go straight into their second buff because they clear a bit slowly. They don't want to get outpaced and maybe invaded in the jungle. Uh, and want to just get that level three power spike with two buffs and then go for either a gank or a contest. Move's already cleared out the scuttle crap. And because it's so recent, Gilius now know that move played on the left side and he just goes back into his jungle. Gets a little bit more information, but as well, I don't think the level three Rek'Sai could have contested the scuttle crap if they had met. So maybe some smart adaptation for move. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just doing the, the standard jungle. <laughs> Pathing right for the, for the camp, and he can always back off. He'll never have to fight Elise if he sees it coming. Elise generally only wins the duels if she kind of catches you by surprise. Yeah, really good second cocoon in that first combo off before swapping the spider form. Gilius, though, making his way into the mid lane. Oh, that's a great yes, stun. Yeah. Ooh, quick. Good call on the clans. I was ready. I thought that was death for Exile. I was but... actually waiting while he came out slightly late here. This is good from Vizichachi. You always want to close the gap on Steve. And then obviously Chen's W denies auto attack, so it makes it such beneficial for him to get trades. Also then the blade travels through, so it, that's the combo you're looking for. And that's what Steve wants to avoid at all costs. Yeah, that Spirit's Refuge, just so strong, able to dodge out all those basic attacks, stop the hyper procs coming in from Nar as well. Exile, interestingly enough, taking the early mm -hmm. blue buff here. Rek'Sai, of course, not reliant on that early mana. And I like what Move is doing uh, in his pathing in both game ones here in these uh, last few weeks. He always makes it that there's a little bit of gain. Last week, he invaded he invaded enemy uh, Gragas versus Rockat and got a first spot um, solidified later on, but he contested all the enemy jungle camps. This time, he, he plays the Rek'Sai and he just forgoes the blues. It's something we see very often from Rek'Sai's, but it's still the correct call. And I think we have to highlight it as a good adaptation. And I like it overall. And you can see clearly in the mid lane that Exile is suffering from all the early pressure that Cassio is putting out. So maybe that'll give him a bit of a reprieve, let him lane a bit more comfortably as we start to approach and look towards the mid game. Of course, no one level six quite yet. We're not going to have that global presence coming in from Shen. Steve, though, doing his best to get what farm he can thus far. Now, Chachi doing a great job of bowling him out. A decent CS lead. Some of that will be recouped as this wave crashes yeah. into the tower. But, I mean, you said it. Shen can bully this lane out, and it looks like he's just coming out on top of it. I think Unicorns are happy with the way this game turned out. Um, they have matching 2v2 that they didn't get punished in early. They have the insurance later on once Shen hits six, which means these lanes can actually go for, like, I usually call them donkey trades. <laughs> what? Like, you just play like a donkey. You just start trading that you know you lose. Let's start to watch the scouting gank here first oh. for move. Goes up, doesn't really have any way out. Jumps back. Yeah, good. good steal there. Yeah, great move gravity coming in. Move definitely in trouble. Fox so aggressive in these exchanges. He doesn't even care anymore. Yeah, move had to path out of the W from, from Cassio before he could flash it. Of course. And, re and regarding these trades, it basically means you can take really bad trades where your enemy's like, okay, this guy is really stupid. Let's kill him. And then Chen comes in. Uh, you basically force them to overcommit into trying to kill you, and you surprise them with the Shen ulti. And that just, and then because your enemy will respect that, it's like, okay, we can't punish these trades. You'll actually win trades harder than you usually would. Because you can get over aggressive. And that's yeah. something we talk about a lot. The nature of teleport, the nature of these global abilities means that it's hard to fight 2v2 in a vacuum. In fact, it's almost impossible. Yeah. That's why you never see solo team. kills anymore. Yeah. It's like, where, where's the action? Where's the excitement? Well, teleport and smart top lane has ruined that. The whole reason we didn't, we still saw them in the start is because people were just too slow at calling for teleports, or top laners were, like, they needed three full seconds to kind of observe na nature before they teleported up. Yeah, lackluster for sure. I think occasionally we are, of course, going to still see them in the mid lane, the nature of the short lane and the sudden burst. Oh, yeah. Not with the Shen, obviously, Stand United limiting that, but with the standard TP, it's kind of hard to get into that short lane. Yeah, it's impossible to punish mid lane fights. Um, but this meta as well, Kind of just re rewards farming in the mid lane. Like, Exiles, you know what? This ulti, I could use it to fight you, but I could just fight the minions instead. Yeah, I don't think easier. he wants to take that fight this stage of the game. Fox, pretty terrifying on this Casio. Is going to give him the opportunity to back out. Really needs to push out before he leaves. He does not have the luxury of a TP for himself. All right. We have Shen online. He's level 6 right now. <laughs> Finally, we can maybe see some action. The action will be initiated on the side of Unicorns. Yesterday, 
He did a great job. Chachi with push up. Say, you know what, guys? Fight. I'm ready to join. Let's see if the Unicorns can find any opening. He have one on the top side. Raw is backing out, though, is going to limit any playmaking potential. But mid lane, Fox continuing to apply pressure. Really, the only lane that go is going poorly thus far for Schalke is going to be that bottom side lane with the top laner, Steve, suffering out, still at a reasonable deficit. Shen, interestingly enough, moving his way up to the top side. Both lanes swapping. Yeah, swapping to bot side for Unicorns makes sense because they obviously want their bot lane around Dragon. So if they win a fight, mm. they can capitalize and turn that into an objective. Um, I think Schalke was maybe just starting to play around Dragon 2 or they just want to dodge the 2v2 plus Shen combo. We'll have to see. Pings coming out on the top lane from Unicorns. They realize that the shift in the lanes has happened. Gilly is continuing to get aggressive and look for vision here. Tunnels coming out. Move looking to secure this red buff. A lot of attention being paid on the bottom side, yeah. but no one really pulling the trigger quite yet. I mean, we, to gauge what's going to happen here, we just need to follow and look at the wards. Wards mm. can predict action. A bit of a cheeky ward here in the brush. Could be a punish here. Veritas will trap the brush, but get caught here. Looking Snare for... goes down. Oh, so no instant W here from Jin. Usually you wait for Karma, obviously, to snare. Hillsign could get punished here. Ooh. Slightly off on the aim from Mr. Rawless. And a good side step from Hillsung. Have to be careful. Of course, Veritas with that level 6. Just throwing down a bit of poke from the ace in the hole. Yeah, in, in that nitpicky scenario, basically, if you're Mr. Rawless, you want to aim for where Hillsung hops off the Karma Q. Because either he then jukes into his uh, into the skill shot and still gets hit by phase 2 of Karma Q, or he walks into the Desert Flourish and he gets punished either way. It's really to go for the double up, kind of. Yeah, it's an issue we've seen from a, a couple different situations, especially I think we had a Nami Jin lane yesterday, trying to figure out, threatening with the bubble, trying to land the yep. snare instead, making sure that there's no path out. And communication good from a lot of these bot lanes, but not so good as to take those sort of things yeah, into calculation. That's if, if you then watch like people like Sven and Mithy, or or even recently Byrefrost and Doublelift, they have kind of that unwritten synergy already. They know exactly how they want each other to use skill shots to either then zone the enemy into it, or just guarantee it landing, you know? Mm. At one point, you remove all escape options if you use two skill shots in a row. Yeah, sort of that chess situation, the checkmate. No yep. moves out, you're trapped where you're gonna be, you're Except gonna get flash. hit by something. Well, and even then, sometimes you can take that flash into account. Of course, pretty difficult. If only you could flash in chess. It's like, I move my king five pieces It's a little forward. bit different when you flash in chess. I don't think that's a part of the rule set. God damn it. <laughs> I've been doing it wrong my entire life. <laughs> I you know, I'm not going to hold it against you. You just probably won't play chess together. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> of course, Dragon going to go down for Schalke. They put so much vision down around this area, and it has paid off. Unicorn's not contesting at all here. Engage comes in, disengage. Shen's on the way down, moves on the back for Sproddle. They're looking for a fight. Rawless caught out. That's going to be Ooh, first blood. Schalke. And they have committed here. Steve teleports in, but there's nothing left for him. You get that in a different angle all of a sudden. We're out. We're in again. Where are we? Are we in a replay? No, we're zoomed out. We're, we're in Twilight Zone. We're, we're, we're in the super zoomed out laning phase. We needed to see exactly. Ants. No, Steve. He's made some Meganar plays this last week. Wonder if he can do it again. Karma on the way in. Good disengage from that bubble. Yeah. I think Mr. Alice could have survived that play because he died with flash up. And don't think the CC layering was perfect on the side <laughs> of Unicorns. But we'll get through that if we get a replay. Right now there's more action going on here. Fox zoning on Exile. He's in MIS to the best of his ability. Pressure going in, of course, Sproddle throwing down a bit of poke here, but not in a good situation, or will not be until Rawls returns. And now with that early kill dropping to UOL, they're building up a decent gold lead. 1,011 minutes into the game. Yeah, if you're Schalke, either you play so aggressive. Hang on, let's see the we play here. So Mr. Rawls and Sproddle moving out. They should be aware of Shen here. Look, he doesn't step into a trap. He gets knocked up here. He could he could flash this bubble that comes out. Uh, I mean, he could flash a Shen talk yeah. that comes <laughs> out, but he was likely just afraid of... He's actually reaching him anyways, and then obviously the bubble was in time from Hillesan. But slightly over aggressive, and if Schalke want to play like this, where they maybe die to a Shen ulti, it's fine. If they go aggressive right after. Yeah, if they... you want to fight Shen, you fight him in two phases. One where you go either even or you lose slightly, and then right after you fight aggressive again and you win because Shen ulti is down. And Stand United about halfway through that cooldown as well as the TP down for Chachi. Yeah. So they should have, or should be able to look for an, at least an even fight. Don't have to worry about that Shen appearing out of nowhere. Don't know if they're going to pull the trigger and get aggressive here, though. It looks like they're just... I mean, just they can. If, if Sprottle just walks up and presses Mantra W, he can actually take the heat from two members and still survive. Because Mantra W gives you so much sustain. Mm. And then Deadly Flourish can guarantee a connect. 
Um, no flash here on Hill Sang, and maybe. Oh, uh, Ghost coming that in. That can work. Gravity Fox. Field, not gonna drop. All comes out. Good. All just trying to get the slowdown, throwing out a decent amount of damage. Flash out from Exile. I mean, this is uh, Shalka clearly aware that they need to get aggressive, mm -hmm. but just small failure to execute. They're not able to get that kill in the end. Yeah, they're definitely looking to pull the trigger in here. And here we see the Shen matchup later on. Such a strong meta pick right now. Does so well in a lot of the matchups. Obviously, and after the W is expired, this is on the back end of the trade. Chen has a bit of issues walking out. But at the same time, obviously, coming out on top here because of the item advantage he has, no Black Cleaver coming in yet for Steve, so he cannot limit the impact of that Sunfire Cape in these trades. And the wards are dropping. The crowds are cheering. Krepo's not happy. Nope. You were around in the era where this started. Oh, bear toss. I started it. I'll finish it. <laughs> Say no to war cheers. It's not your drug of choice. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Bear toss. Here comes the Shen. They missed out on the opportunity, Ooh. but Sparrow's in trouble. Shot. Is it going to be the kill? Flash out. Hillisang hunting for blood. Can he get the movement speed steroid from the passive? Snared up. Good disengage from Rawless. Game of inches here. That's Ooh. good for Schalke if they survive right here because they drew Shen ulti bot and they got a flash out of the exchange. You did a turnaround here. One Third shot, ball. two shot. He just wants the minions. He doesn't yes. care. No, he wants Hillisang. Ooh, nice block by Chachi. Doesn't have to clear out the minions though, and that may have been a mistake because they're going to be able to burn down this tower. I mean, Chachi would have body blocked it regardless. I like it going for that support booty. Sometimes you have to make that choice. But there's a trade going on, but then Victor path the top lane here. I like this from Exile, you know. Relinquishing his duty of Wayflare in mid lane, pathing top to save that tower. And now the Rek'Sai moves over to mid lane. This is like Wayflare chess. And I like it too because we were so critical of Unicorns of Love for not being able to cross map at all. But now they're respecting the cross map prepper, shifting their members around and yep. clearing out these waves. Definitely improving their lane assignments. Going for good plays here. Good flash on Veritas as well. Gets out of the cocoon. Let's see if Shaka can again use this window. Shenalty is down, TP is... Slow for one and still down for a little bit longer. Mm. Gilius still equal level versus his enemy Rek'Sai, but move again is building that side stone. So despite not playing one through one this game, Unicorns are still opting for a very vision-centric gameplay pattern. Sprottle may be looking to clear out a bit of that vision, but we've talked about Ward showing well, us <laughs> where the next vision is going to be or the next place is going to be. And it looks like there's a lot of topside control here. Unicorns of Love, I think, set to pressure out this tower, kind of rinse and repeat what they were able to do in the bottom lane. Yeah. They obviously, once your bot lane takes one tower, you want to move. It looks like strong enough right now to survive most of the burst. And move is always kind of shadowing his bot lane here, wherever they go. I want to see more traps here, though. There's a, a distinct yeah. lack of traps up here for Veritas. Because against a lane that has a low mobility AD carry, you can just wall off one side and force him to play on the other one. It makes it so much easier for Nami to zone with bubble as well. Absolutely, and especially for Shen, if he does manage to come in to ensure that those taunts are going to land Rek'Sai, any of that initial start off CC. Disapproving dad, Crepo. Now, I'm, I'm closer to the crowd here because usually I have my back in the arena. We cast, you know, yeah, yeah. back to the crowd. I, I see that. But now I can actually look at them. So every time they cheer for the crowd, <laughs> hey. I just watch them and I'm like, I kind of love it. No more war cheers. And Unicorns of Love look like they want to get something here. The healing from Karma is massive. Just like you talked about, move in trouble. Oh, Gilly dead. is going to snag that one. Yeah, you can cheer for that one. Greedy crowd. jungler comes in to take the kill. And Shaka want to keep this train rolling. Third proc coming out, a little bit more mobility. Are they going to go for the dive, Jin? Deadly Flourish, not going to find purchase there. And here's Fox. Fox flanking. Does he have flash? Quick gander over. Goes. He does not have flash. Here Let's comes goes. the Wombo. They're looking for it. Oh, Two Steve. in the wall. That's beautiful. Unicorns of love. Clean dive. Can they come out on top? Chachi blocking the shots. Will he be able to make it out? No. Shalka pick up the kills, make things happen, and they're burning down the top Yeah, lane. Unicorns had to run with their tail between their legs, but they didn't. They chose to defend four man while they had Exile in the mid lane. Exile chose not to path over because he couldn't chase a Cassio blind in the river. Because obviously Fox could then turn around and hunt him down. Only Cleanse wouldn't save Exile. So he chose to take that mid lane tower as a cross map. But this was Unicorns. Yeah. Kind of getting surprised there. And what a fight from Schalke. And that completely equalizes the game here. And when we looked at the laning phases, we were wondering who's going to come out on top. Clear that Chachi won the day for the top laners. But in those team fights, that NAR ultimate is so clutch. And Steve clearly comfortable continuing to execute from what we saw yesterday. All right. It all starts with Hillisang going into dual battle here. Gilius is already pathing over. Look at Fox as well. When does he start to move over? Now move goes in. Sidestone next side flashes in. Sprattle survives for very long. That's the match of W right here. Look at the double regeneration. Front base and at the end of the channel. Move is so squishy. And now Fox is here in the fight already. When Exile decides to path back into mid lane. 
That's Steve. He liked that play. And now we're doing Dragon. Absolutely looking for that first. Ooh, Ocean Drake is going to go down in favor of move. And the thing about the end of the play that we missed, they saw Cassio on the top side. They should have been able to predict that dive. Really not enough respect coming out from the Unicorns of Love. They are, however, looking to take down this tower. It's only going to take one more auto, and it doesn't look like they're going to get the chance to get it. A little more poke coming out for Veritas as the rest of the team moves into backup Fox. Wonder if we're going to see Steve's face after how he feels about that tower team. Yeah, I mean, the tower was already 20%, mm. so I think Steve would be... I mean, Steve is never yeah. sad. I, I rarely see him sad. I think Steve's always happy. He seems like, yeah, pretty happy guy. Those are the scary people, man. Yeah, I mean, it's terrifying, right? Is he, like, genuinely How? a good guy, or is he crazy? <laughs> what? Are you calling Steve crazy? I'm not calling. He makes crazy plays, man. I mean, it's yeah. not a far leap, right? <laughs> no, but yeah, he's always happy. <laughs> yeah, good guy. Good guy, Steve. Yeah. Does That's have to give R. up his top lane tower. Concede. Concede. Concede, don't feed. That is the mantra for Steve here. Looking to hopefully... Maybe give up another tower here because we have a collapse oh, from unicorns. Love. They want to make something happen. Minionar's on the way. Good taunt. Chain CC. They're keeping it together. Steve comes out of Meganar and instantly gets blown up. Yeah, I like this grouping here from the unicorns. They just realize there's no cross map going on from Schalke. And they brute force themselves two towers and a kill. And suddenly, they're up a thousand gold. This is such a back and forth game. Schalke, you talk about those windows where they have the opportunity to miss plays, but missing this one completely. Yeah. And we'll watch this one more time. Yeah, this is the back end of the replay here. And here we have... Love the NAR combo into Miasma. So any hard CC into Miasma guarantees you perma CC. You always have to be very careful when you dive at Shen because everybody will be all attacking him. And with that W, he obviously ignores them for like, what, two or three seconds. And it makes it very rough, so be wary of that. Yeah, of course. Does scale up with level 1.75 seconds at this point in the game. Maybe it doesn't scale up. 1.575 seconds. Pretty good window of time, but simply not enough at that stage. Chachi cannot hold out against that many members. And nope. that Miasma combo you're talking about is terrifying. If it hits you first, you can't flash away from the incoming Megan R. If it hits you second, you're not getting Still out of all flash. the follow up. <laughs> yeah. If it There's hits no you, flashing. you can't flash. Yeah. <laughs> There's no flashing. This is, this is this not. Is no flash zone. No flash. I know that's hard for you, Krupple. You're going to have to <laughs> resist the temptation. I know, man. My favorite <laughs> comic series, not being able to. <laughs> I actually only watch the series. I don't read the comics. Did you watch uh, Flash, Sifa? No, nah, see, I watched Arrow, but I watched Arrow during the time period where it started to go downhill, and then I was like, There's You mean <laughs> from the start? <laughs> <laughs> After season one. Give the, I feel like season one was pretty good. Yeah. I can't tell if they're cheering for that or for cheering that Arrow was bad. I think they're cheering for a ward. Or At both. this point, they're cheering for anything. <laughs> 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 Look, the wall is red. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> this crowd really likes red walls. <laughs> this is the best crowd ever. No, I really Gilius, like though, not too happy about this. Oh, I wonder how the crowd feels about Gilius probably going to die here. Oh, we'll comes in, out. flash in. Ooh, not quite enough damage. Doesn't even get blocked out by Fox in the end. Oh, he survives. I really like the intimacy of this arena. So hopefully we get a big team fight five on five soon. So mm. we can get that crowd going. I couldn't hear that, but I'm sure it was awesome. I'm sure it was an eloquent <laughs> reply. <laughs> <laughs> an eloquent scream across an audience of people. All right, where are we at in this game? Unicorns, they mm -hmm. seem to have control of the map again. Um, definitely compacter than they usually play. Like at this point in the game, in many games this season, Unicorns would have the 1v1 one one going on both side lanes, mm -hmm. you know, with the double side zone adaptation that they've done recently. But right now, they're actually playing towards their 4-1, so it's good to see that they can actually play different strategies. And I really like this from Exile as well. He's developing so much as a mid laner. Used to be the Yasuo, the LeBlanc, and only these kind of split push solo carries. The Anivia yesterday, Victor, something we saw him struggle with in his first set, now coming up big in this game. One kill, not the best, but not yeah. giving up anything. Control here. mages, so important in this meta, but they are down next to damage dealer. They're playing with more tanks on the side of Unicorns, which gives you slower and more controlled fights, but when it gets explosive, Schalke has the damage edge. So crucial now to protect those carries as well. Oh, Veritas, look at the snare, and instant oh, follow up. good snare. Move, moving in. Oh, what? That is so much damage, Schalke. But they start to fight, Chachi, maybe looking to make it go. God, Gilly is getting burned down. Steve running on the back foot. They're trying to make it out of here. They bit off a bit more than they could chew. Yeah, they got second portion or something because they went for Veritas. They flashed in, but you don't flash 
into a victor. Immediate cleanse from Exile, followed up by the Chaos Storm, and he bobs Fox on the head, punishing for that play, and then Gilius has to make his way out. Luckily, Vizichachi found a way into the fight still with the teleport, and that's a good reaction here from Unicorns. Absolutely. Now trying to pressure in on this tier two. Meganar comes out from Steve. Wave just making sure that they can burn down this tower. Move has to be careful. No snare coming out from Morales. Are they overextending here? No, it doesn't look like it. Tier two drops. Unicorns of love. What a turnaround. Now with almost a 4k gold lead. Yeah, you have to be so careful. I mean, it looks so fun. You connect Deadly Flourish, you connect Kuku, and you're like, okay, guys, we got him. But then you forget that the enemy has a control mage in a straight up teamfight where you run at him. And that, I mean, the cleanse, <laughs> cleanse alone won them that fight. Being able to turn around that engage, the power of Victor, 1-0 and 2, now the score for Exile, picking up the quick to assist in that fight. And I mean, for the first two seconds, it looked like Shocker were going to obliterate the Unicorns. If you're going to make that play with a flanking Meganar, it's good for Shocker because then you have kind of Steve to be the glue in the back line. Right now we see Shocker having some vision control on the river, and they push it into a Bammer. Look, left side, that's a ward for the Unicorns. They just, Shalka they just found it. out. Move on the way in, Shen on the way in as well. Here's the mobility coming in for the team. A lot of low health bars, but Shen is in. Chachi burns down the Karma. Steve is next, ult gets canceled. Exile going massive, is Rollis going to drop? Yes, Gilius wants to get something back, but there's no prizes to the victor go the spoils. Double kill for Exile. And Schalke, they said that they stand or fall in terms of consistency based on Gilius and his shot calling. And we have to be honest here, this was a horrendous call and it was a good punish from the Unicorns. Move and Vizichachi come in as a tandem duo. Kind of the submarine Shen underground he goes. And then Shen pops out, easily won a fight here by the Unicorns. Look at it, this is the moment, this is the frame where Shalkin knows they done goofed. Because they find the ward in the pit, they're already half HP. Veritas is not engaging with Fox, he's just buying time here. Exile versus Mr. Rawls, slow mobility AD carry with no flash. I mean, it's Exile versus the Victor Alt at that point. He can't get out. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, one overstep from Schalke. Unicorn's there with the quick punish. I like decisive plays like that, going for the Baron, but Ooh. you have to be ready to Yeah, get... like that in, in a sense of like, let's clear out the vision first. Let's make vision-informed decisions. I like, see, I like bold plays. I think it's always cool to see teams pull the trigger in uncertain scenarios, but obviously there's a risk. And clearly it was not a good evaluation of risk versus reward in that scenario. Yeah, I, I like bold plays, as, if, as you say, like if there's you know, calculated risk in there, but this wasn't calculated at all. This was just, guys, uh, Baron's here, let's do it. Oh, they have a ward, we'll just lose the game. Well, it was so much, they have a comp that can make picks, you know, Gin Ulti can always facilitate picks later in the game. Yes, it's hard versus Chen. you may need to try a couple of times, but Schalke, they kind of concede the game with that play, but again, Unicorns with the Shen comes, they seem so much more cohesive. Yesterday, game one, they get the Shen, they completely run a train over Splice, a team that is ranked above them. Right now they play Schalke above them too, with the Shen again, and really they perform. Is. Using that protobell, trying to get a bit more damage down. Chashi just going to flash out. A small advantage, but they're losing their inhibitor tower on the bottom side. Have Unicorns overextended. Exile pushing in, he wants more kills. The oh my god, this man on a rampage as he rips through Schalke. Inhibitor set to fall. Yeah. Unicorns taking control of this game, and Schalke running out of options. And look at the trap line pointing at the remains of the tower. It's the equivalent of the mighty V here as they push into the base. Please tell me you know that reference. The mighty V? I was thinking no. about the phalanx. No, mighty V, man. Moving in, Exile now unstoppable. He's gonna keep the highlight reel Bombs rolling. Good turn away on the petrifying gaze. They're going to look to take down another inhibitor. Bot one going to fall the minions in the next couple seconds. Veritas, he's looking for some stylish plays. Wants a highlight reel of his own. Sproddle knocked up, knocked out. Unicorns of Love now set to take the first game in this series. Moving in, beautiful team fighting. One poor decision from Schalke, costing them the day. Gilius doing what he can. No room left to shot call, no room left to make plays. Unicorns of Love closing out the game in style. The crowd giving them some well-deserved cheers, and that is going to do it for game one as Unicorns look to move up in this set. Yeah, we can see right there, Exile very happy. Honestly, he's definitely improving here in the LCS, and he just feels much more natural, feels much more composed in a lot of these games. Earlier in the season, he was playing LeBlanc, either Snowball or Bust. Yasuo was split push for a while, it, w it went well, and then he made these really big errors. But right now, on this Victor Control Mage, slow, calm, and collected early game, and then he adapts. 
and he just wrecks team fights. And honestly, I, I really like the way he played that game. You said played slowly at first, but at the end there, when he knew we had the gold lead, we saw that LeBlanc exile. Man, went in, tried yep. to make plays, still finding those solo kills, so getting aggressive, but now it's tempered. It's no longer yep. about 1v1 style plays. When he has the advantage, he's pushing it, and that is the kind of play I love to see. But just like yesterday, the Unicorns are now moving to purple side, which means they have much more must bans, and Schalke will have a lot more easier bans on the blue side. Uh, for example, Schalke can go for like an early Nidalee themselves, which works very well against Unicorn stylistically. They don't have to ban Vladimir themselves. They can honestly just ban Shen, ban out the Comfort Pigs, get rid of uh, the Bard to Shen, and then we need to see, can Unicorns perform in Game 2 on the purple side without some of their good picks? Big question. And what are they going to put Exile on is always going to be the question for me. Now, earlier in the week I was so focused on move, but with this strategy, he does so well. But Exile feels like the story to me because Anivia yesterday, game one, great as well. Yep. Victor, game one here, great. Are they going to keep him on a control mage? I really think that they have to. I think they, they should, because it just, but it works so well. Let's not forget, when, it, when you run a 4-1 with a control mage in the mid lane and the enemy team also does it, then Chen has such an easy kind of way to influence the game because they can always jump into these fights that are very obvious that they're coming. 1-3-1 is much more dynamic, especially when it clashes with a 4-1. Also, it helps that your Shen gets ahead in the early game and now <laughs> is winning the 1v1. If you're yeah. playing 4-1, the only thing that matters is who's on those side lanes. And if Shen is beating Nar, you have so much liberty, you have so much room for plays. That's why Unicorns, for the majority of the game, was controlling the map. And I like what Shaka were able to do to pull that back, but then they got over-aggressive. We, we look at the, yeah. the Baron that came out for them, Really insane. That I mean, Shaka let's look at it again. I think we yeah. have a highlight ready uh, for that Baron. Because this is the fight that really decided the game when we think about it. This Baron fight where Schalke started to overextend, got yeah. aggressive. I called it a bold call. I mean, it, it's definitely bold. It's just whether <laughs> it's knowingly bold because there's a fine line between courage and stupidity. Yeah, yeah. Bold and greedy, right? Bold like, and greedy. Yeah, so they're looking at that Baron. They're setting it up. He's like, guys, we need to get back in the game. Maybe Schalke felt that they lost. I don't think you can always say that you're lost with a Jin comp. But look, corner from one side from move. Cassio ulti moved on just uh, used on one tank, and then Shen lands right after. So that stun is essentially worthless. Gilius misses Cocoon. Exile takes down Rawas. And in the bottom side, Veritas had, honestly, a duel with Fox, where Fox put out zero damage because Veritas dodged most of it. And really, the other issue, too, is that not only was it ult on a single tank, it was a Rek'Sai already in mid-tunnel oh, animation. Who you can't interrupt. There's a Shen on the way coming in, too. And you can see the panic that came in. Clearly, Shaka were not ready for the turnaround yeah. because we know Fox can land those good ults when it counts, but it just put in a situation where he had no option. I want to listen to the comms for, for Shaka there. I want to find out what was going on once they go to that Baron. Say, okay, guys, Baron's going a little slow. Um, are they going to come contest? Okay, they're coming. And then somebody places a pink cords. Oh, there's a ward here. <laughs> I wanted to see that frame, you know, in The Simpsons when you see, like, Ralph Williams' heartbreak. Yeah. <laughs> That's the equivalent of Schalke right there. It's like, it's a, this exact frame that we can me uh, notice that Schalke... <laughs> Rehash our, our, yeah. our highlight moments from last week. <laughs> Look at him, he's tilting right now! <laughs> he's like, breaking. Ob yep, obviously, tilting. really, really rough overall for these guys. And I, I think we saw Schalke set up for another scrappy back-and-forth game, like what we saw yesterday mm -hmm. in their sets. But, I mean, when you make... I, risky plays, when you make greedy plays like that, it makes it so easy. And Unicorns love, I think, showing yep. us that if you give them an advantage, they will close with confidence. Smaller map with more vision uh, worked for Unicorns. Double sidestone, again, you know, in a 4-1 split push where you have enough wave clear to hold. So you, when you, you don't really get caught out uh, off guard, but then you can accelerate uh, turrets. Also, they had that really nice move in the top lane. They were like, you know what? These guys are not cross-mapping us. Let's just take two towers and Steve. I really like these decisive plays from the Unicorns. It feels like they're operating as a team for... Honestly, a roster that I felt had absolutely zero shot calling at the start of the season. So, improvement. Yeah, definitely. I think we can say marked improvement yesterday in their game one. We have to see if it's going to be consistent yeah. coming into game two. That's because the, the failure to adapt from Unicorns Love has been a glaring issue. Now, a lot of their issues appear to be being solved. More respect for the cross map. I'm loving what I'm seeing here. But it just doesn't feel like they've really figured it out. Overall, though, that's going to do it here for us on EU LCS 2 for now, but we'll be back with the second game in this series right after this quick break.